Well, I think there's a fairly clear way of looking at that, which is to look basically at the history of Japan and China. Um, they're the two big countries in the region, and how they get on pretty much affects everybody else. So there are historical legacies in the region attaching to both of them. One historical legacy is the fact that they haven't got on with each other for basically four or five hundred years. Um, and there's a very active process, you know, particularly in China and also in Korea, um, of remembering that. Um, and there's a very active process in Japan of forgetting that. Um, so there's a sense in which, uh, unlike, say, in Europe, where people know the history, but uh, it doesn't play much into contemporary politics, um, in Northeast Asia, uh, People both know and don't know the history. They know bits of the history which they remember very well and which are reconstructed for them by their uh, their governments and kept alive. And those bits of history play very much into contemporary politics. So there's a history problem between Japan and China that poisons their current relations. This is less true uh, of relations between both of them and the rest of the region. But uh, China, of course, has a very long tradition of being a kind of suzerain or hegemonic power in the region, and therefore you know, the smaller neighbors of China live with that issue and the concern that uh, China will look to reassert the certain kinds of Chinese terms of phrase, like a return to normality, <laughs> rather carry the, the suggestion uh, of Chinese hegemony in the region. Uh, again, as a goal of the of the government, so these are two big countries with uh, a bad relation between themselves and not such good relations with their neighbourhood, either. And on top of that, uh, much of this is remembered and actively played in contemporary politics. Well, that sounds very ambitious, as if I have some kind of cure for all of this, which I don't. Um, but my thought is that these history problems, um, the way things are remembered and forgotten in a very selective way, and the way that's played into contemporary politics, um, that outsiders can uh, maybe, it's worth a, worth a try, maybe outsiders can try to address that by saying, well, let's look at this story in a bigger scale. Let's look at it not just as the relationship between China and Japan, but as the relationship of both of them with the West. So the story I have to tell uh, is one in which the encounter, if you want to use that word, um, between uh, China and Japan on one hand and the West on the other, very much a shared experience. It was about the same sorts of things, about trade, about status, about war, about racism. Uh, the whole package was very similar in both cases. Um, it was very close in time, so they had a kind of shared encounter with the West. And if the story is told in that way, what is common between them turns out to be considerably more important um, than what's antagonistic between them. Um, and it also turns out that, in an odd way, their stories are remarkably similar. Um, and therefore, if you tell the history in this broader and global way, situate the local history within a global one, uh, you end up not with a story of heroes and villains, but with a story where everybody does some things well and some things badly, and it's a much more balanced kind of history. And the hope is, and it's no more than a hope, um, that that might provide an alternative place to start thinking and talking.